Acts 2, 16 through 18. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. There's something for everyone here. No restrictions based on age or gender. Notice that it does not say that those things will pass in the last days. It says that they will happen in the last days. People who deny that the gifts of the Spirit are still given today are contradicting the Scripture. Anything that directly contradicts Scripture is not of or from God. Things that contradict the Word of God come from the mouth of Satan. Dreams Numbers 12, 4 through 8 And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth, and he said, Hear my words, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? God still speaks to people and reveals himself to people in dreams. Some years back, I had the most amazing dream. Let me share it with you. I was in a log cabin, and there was a man lying on a cot. He was covered with a crocheted, many-colored blanket. He was clutching it in trembling, white-knuckled fists. His eyes were fixed with terror on the door of the cabin. I looked to see what had him so terrified. The cabin door was open just a little bit, and I could see a man riding on a white horse. The man was wearing a white robe, and his face shined so brightly that I could not make out the features of the face. But I knew this was Jesus. I turned back to the man on the cot and told him to repent now and ask Jesus to forgive him for his sins. Then Jesus would forgive him and he would go to heaven. But the man was in such terror that he seemed not to hear. As Jesus approached, the door seemed to just disappear and clean, bright, white light flooded the room, so much so that even the dirtiest, darkest corners of the room looked brighter and whiter than the cleanest, whitest snow I have ever seen on a sunny day. Yet the light did not hurt my eyes. Then I woke up and praised God because I had seen Jesus in glory in my dream. I also prayed for the man and others like him. I don't share this with you to get an interpretation or to lift myself up, but to show you that God still uses dreams today. Not all dreams are from God. In fact, most are just dreams. However, this dream which I just shared makes me want to praise and honor Jesus even more because it gave me just a little taste of what it will be like to see him in his glory. And it makes me look forward to the day I will see him in the fullness of his awesome glory. It also motivates me to want to share him with others so they don't have to die in fear as that man in my dream was in fear, nor go to hell and be eternally separated from Jesus and his goodness and love. I want to reach the lost so they can see Jesus in his glory and look on him with unspeakable joy and love. 
and we can all rejoice in that together. Visions, John 16, 13 through 14. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Visions and dreams are very closely related. In fact, sometimes dreams can also be called visions. Both are something God sovereignly chooses to reveal to his people. Generally, I prefer to see dreams as something that happens when you are asleep and visions as something that happens when you are awake. I have only had one vision in my life. It was a very brief look into a situation a dear friend was in, and it prompted me to pray. Initially, I had decided not to talk about it, but a few days later, when I was talking with my brother, for some reason I shared it with him. Then he also shared with me that he had a matching vision on the same day, and at or very close to the same time, about the same thing. Although the details were different, the meaning was the same. So we both prayed for our friend. Visions occur many times in the Bible. God has used them to guide Christians to where they needed to share the gospel, to warn them not to go to certain places, to give wisdom, knowledge, instruction, and revelation, including writing the entire book of Revelation. First John 4, 1 John 4.1 Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Not all visions are necessarily from God either. I once watched a debate between Christians and atheists. At the end, they opened the floor for questions. A young man came with his question. He had seen a spirit in his room one night that had showed him that homosexual love is just as pure and holy as love between a man and a woman. So he was asking if he should leave the church that taught that homosexuality was sin. I felt horribly sorry for this young man and wished I could have been there to take him to Scripture to show him what the Bible really says. Read Romans 1 and you will see that this spirit was directly contradicting Scripture. The Bible also declares that God does not change and that Satan can appear as an angel of light. So this young man had a vision that was a deceiving spirit sent to trick him and lead him into sin. Read your Bible and learn what it says. Use that knowledge to always test every spirit. God will not contradict his written word. If you know who is speaking to you, you can know whether to receive what is being said or to cast out that spirit and take those thoughts captive and make them subject to God. The Holy Spirit can guard your heart and mind from deception and give you discernment. Discernment of spirits is a gift of the Holy Spirit, which you can ask God to give you, but you need a relationship with God to use his gifts. That starts with repentance of sin, turning away from it and turning to Jesus for forgiveness and salvation. That starts with a simple little prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins and that you rose again the third day. I repent of my sins, so please forgive me for my sins and come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Help me overcome sin in my life and live for you, so I will have joy when I see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Get a Bible and start reading it to learn more of his will, so you can live out his holiness in your life. If you have ever wished you could read the story of Jesus' life from all four Gospels chronologically, you might like Emmanuel by April Marie. You can check it out at any of these websites, also included in the video description. Thank you for watching.
May you hear Jesus speak to you.